Hello and welcome to my RPG framework for Tabletop Simulator. This uh, framework is ideal for D20 games like Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, Pathfinder, and a plethora of other games. My framework is currently set up for four players and a GM area with lots of uh, features, so I will go through them right now. First, you will see that we have an increased play area. This table is much larger than the regular tabletop simulator table and has uh, player trays that have been moved uh, further apart to make room for the extra space. We have <clears throat> trays for each player. Uh, each tray consists of uh, the player's dice, uh, various tokens that the player may use, uh, character sheet and um, spell cards if they are a spellcaster. Uh, spellcasters also have a uh, side table where they have uh, all of their spell cards available, multiple copies thereof, so they can easily, uh, when memorizing spells, uh, grab the desired spells, uh, drag them over to their uh, tray, and then flip them over once they're used. One of the biggest features of the RPG framework is the player-specific role macros. If I change here to the uh, GM, I can see all of the player role macros uh, and a section here for uh, um, NPCs, typically bad guys. All of these are visible to the GM. If a player logs in and they select their appropriate color, they will only see their respective role macro. The uh, role macro for each player shows the player's name, maximum uh, current uh, armor class, uh, maximum hit points, plus a bunch of different uh, roles that can be made. Um, typically, the first pull-down menu has a bunch of weapon attacks. The second one has miscellaneous uh, abilities like spells or sneak attack damage. Third one typically has um, attributes and saves. Uh, then all the skills. And lastly, there's a pull down for just miscellaneous dice with no modifiers. Uh, all of these can be customized. This is just the, uh, um, the convention that I used for our game, but um, any of these uh, lists could be replaced with um, any kind of roles you would, would like. It should be noted that when any of these roles are made, the uh, role macro actually will roll the appropriate dice and uh, um, then report the results down in the chat bar. Uh, this is not just a random number generator, it does actually make the roles, as we can see here. I'm done playing nice! As you can see, the dice were actually tossed, and then the results were placed down in the chat. Uh, by default, this chat is uh, visible to everyone, uh, but it could be easily modified to make it only available uh, visible to the person that rolled it, uh, or only to the GM, whatever you like. Um, anytime one of these selections is changed, it automatically makes that I've roll. no time for you! Let's end this quickly! If uh, the player wants to re-roll the same uh, thing over again, such as in a combat when you're making the same type of attack, uh, you can just hit the button. I have no and time for you. Let's end this again. quickly. So one of the other um, features of the framework is animated characters. If I zoom in here onto our current party, um, all of the player characters have uh, multiple animations. There is a um, idle animation, which is what we're seeing right now. Uh, there is a ready animation that the characters can swap into um, when they make certain roles. You can also swap these, uh, these animations manually by clicking on the character and uh, selecting it. So there, for example, is the ready stance. Um, all of the characters have a... Uh, unconscious, tripped, or death um, animation. And they also have a walking animation. 
the walking animation is automatically triggered when you pick up the character and uh, are moving it. And then, of course, we have our attack animations. Currently, all of the characters um, each have only one attack animation, regardless of what they are actually uh, doing. But that's customizable. You can have different types of animation and link it to the type that you're rolling. Um, the animations do, however, currently have associated uh, battle quotes with it, and that's randomized. So uh, each character typically has up to six battle quotes, and when they make an attack, the um, battle quote is selected at random, or again, can be triggered manually. Come here. I won't bite. Not too much, anyway. Foolish mortal, you can't outrun me. So... All of these uh, um, uh, animated characters are fairly easy to make. I do have a video on how to take uh, Mixamo free characters and uh, uh, add animations to them for this kind of purpose. The video is about 45 minutes in length, but goes through step by step of exactly what to do. So even uh, somebody who is not familiar with uh, 3D modeling or things like that should be able to follow it to add animated characters to the framework. Next, we have the menu up here. Uh, this menu is basically for the camera. Um, we have uh, view one, two, three, four, and five. These are preset views that the um, GM can set up ahead of time to um, take the view uh, to a specific point and a specific uh, direction. Um, when the GM presses any of those, it will apply that view to all players. <clears throat> there is also the um, uh, CH, the character view. Um, when a player presses this uh, button, uh, the camera will ch change for that one player to a view of his, basically a, a over the shoulder shot um, of his or her character. So this, uh, this uh, character here is uh, currently associated uh, with, um, <clears throat> with the black player. So when I press uh, the CH, it zooms in on that character kind of an over-the-shoulder shot. If I'm facing it a different direction, the camera will automatically adjust to show what that character is seeing. Then we have the uh, player 1 through 4 buttons. That just takes the view to a uh, top-down view of the player area. So um, quite uh, convenient to quickly navigate to your uh, player section if uh, that's necessary. For example, to look up spells, look at the character sheet, and so on. Uh, and finally, there's the, the uh, TO, um, top-down view. Uh, basically just uh, gives a top-down view of the current play area. This function right here. Down here, we basically have a, the ability to allow the GM to perform a operation on a lot of similar content. Uh, the original reason for implementing this was Fog of War. The tabletop simulator does have Fog of War, but it doesn't really suit my needs. The, the problem with it is that when a character reveals Fog of War, if they come up to a wall or a closed door, the Fog of War will be revealed beyond that wall or door, and therefore the characters can see somewhat what's behind the wall or behind the unopened door. I didn't like this, so I implemented my own version of Fog of War. It requires a little bit more work on the GM's part, but if uh, set up correctly, it's, um, it works very well. The idea is that I mark um, all content with a keyword um, indicating what area the content belongs to. So for example here, we've got room number one and we can see that all of the content has the keyword room one in it. Um, we also have the generic keyword content so that I can easily um, add or delete all content. And at the moment it's got the keyword hidden because all of this content is currently hidden from the player's view. As we move along, we can see that once we get to room two, 
everything's now marked with a room, room two keyword. If we look at the wall in between, we can see that it is marked with both room one and room two. Now, what is the purpose of this? Well, the purpose of this is that I can now um, go to my operations here and among them I have hide and show. So I can select show and now if I type in the keyword room one, for example, it will make all of the contents that are marked with room one visible. So for example, when the characters are in the hallway and they open the door to room one, I would just type in room one here. I can determine what location it is very simply just by putting my mouse over it and immediately I see the keyword. I type that in with the, the show selected and that room will become visible, but the rest of the room will not. I have a peak um, button here. What that allows me to do is as a GM, I'm seeing everything and it's a little hard to tell if things are visible or not visible to the players. So by hitting the peak button, it shows me what the players are seeing. So currently they're just seeing the stairway up here and all of this content is basically hidden until uh, they enter this area. So if I go back now to the GM view, we can look that the hallway here um, has the keyword hall. So for example, once the characters come up and see this hall, all I need to do is type hall, I'm on the show. Seemingly nothing has happened here, but now when I go to the peak, you can see that whole wall, a hall and anything associated in, uh, with that hall has now been shown. Similarly, once the characters get up to um, the first door here, for example, and they look inside, and if your content is nicely done, you can even get things like this. So once the uh, characters uh, enter room one, again, I can put my mouse over it to, to realize which room it is. Uh, this one's called room one. I do room one and now the players can see the contents of room one. At the moment, <clears throat> oh, looks like uh, there's a couple of items here that I have incorrectly identified. That's the, the downside of this solution. It works well, but um, all of the content needs to be marked properly for it to work. So that was the initial uh, concept behind this, um, this functionality here. But over time, I've evolved it for other features. Um, we have show and hide. We've just gone through those. I do have a lock and unlock so that all content can easily be locked or um, unlocked. Uh, I do have a um, phase and unphase. This came about when I was doing a, a forest encounter where there was a lot of uh, action going on in the forest, but it was hard to see the actual content because the trees were in the way. So the uh, unphase and phase allow you to make the content uh, partially transparent, thus allowing you to see much better underneath it. I also have a lift and sync. Uh, the lift basically um, lifts any content uh, somewhat up, and this is very useful if you are actually making uh, 3D buildings that the PCs can enter. Uh, this right here is not such an example. This is basically um, maybe a second floor of a castle, but it is just a single floor. If I wanted to go to the first floor, I would have to load completely different content. But I do, for example, have an inn that has two floors to it and a roof. And um, all of that is accessible. So when the characters first see the inn, everything is stacked appropriately. But then if we want to move the characters within the first floor, I would use the lift operation to lift the roof and the second floor so that we can see inside the, the first floor inn. When they make their way up to the second floor, I would then sync the 
uh, second floor, so it's now down and we can see uh, into the second floor. That's what. Lastly, we have the um, delete option here. And what the delete option allows me to do is quickly swap between encounters while still keeping all of the player content the same. So imagine you've played your first encounter, uh, players have used up some of their spells. If you were just to load the next encounter, including the framework, all of that, uh, that stuff that the players have done, like used up spells or uh, adjusted um, uh, other stuff, would all be um, undone because you just loaded a new, uh, new content or a new game. So instead, the delete option allows us to delete all of the content. Now, all of, in this case, these three encounters, um, all of the content on them have been marked with the keyword content. Everything from the framework does not have that keyword. So if I want to quickly switch to the next encounter, I can do, uh, I can select here the delete option into the text box type content. And you can see that immediately all of the content has been removed. And now I can use the additive load to load the next encounter. So for example, here I can go additive load and I've got new content here now, but all of the framework stuff has remained the same. So if, for example, again, spells were used up, we don't need to go through and set those up again because all of that remained the same. Last point I'd like to make is, this is not really related to the framework, although the framework sort of helps this along, and that is that you can make your environments as immersive as you like. In this particular case, um, from one of the other games, this is not my own creation, I've borrowed some um, buildings. Uh, these buildings are basically just static buildings. Um, doors don't open and nothing like that. Um, characters can't really go inside. But, you know, they still serve their function. If, if the adventure doesn't need the characters to go inside, putting a bunch of these, these um, houses around, can get the feeling of a of a village or you know it's it's a lot more immersive than just having tile walls set up um, it really especially when you you zoom in down to the level it makes the characters feel that they're actually in the environment but as i was uh, talking earlier you can take this uh, further um, depending on your uh, modeling skills and how well you can find things um, on the internet, and you can actually make buildings and content that, again, the characters can go inside, but again, isn't just typical tile walls. So for example, here we have the inn that I spoke of earlier, and I can feature here the, um, um, the lift and, and sink system. So if I mouse over the roof, I can see that it's called uh, um, in third floor, so I'm going to lift in third floor. <clears throat> now we can see that the roof has been lifted, and we can actually see now the contents of the second floor. We can see um, a stairway that actually leads up. It's a little bit hard to see, but but you can see that it is a physical stairway, it's not just a graphic. And then we can see a bunch of rooms with uh, various content. Again, the inn was put together by me, but the various contents such as the beds and um, chests and uh, all that were taken from a, uh, another module freely available on Steam. Uh, and yes, uh, that's um, one one way to get a whole bunch of content for your uh, uh, your modules, if you're not using somebody else's module, is to open up various modules, uh, take uh, items that you like, and uh, save them as um, objects, and then you can use reuse those in um, in your own games. Typically, um, the Steam games don't really have 
um, conditions on use. So especially if you're using it for your own personal use, um, it should be quite fine. Now again, here, I can, go, I can go back and I've worked on the different levels so I can now also lift the second floor and voila there we go we have the inn we can <clears throat> we can see the, the bar here with a bunch of shelves tables and stools and the stairway leading up we can see a storage room and probably some kind of a kitchen or, or, or something like that um, on the inn, I didn't actually make the doors open, but uh, as you saw earlier in one of the uh, samples, I do have uh, doors that are animated and uh, doors that will creak as you open them. So uh, those could be used to even take this a step further. And then of course, when the characters are outside, I can just go and sink the second floor sink third floor and you've got content um, what it looks like from the outside and of course you can go with this as you know as complex or as uh, simple as you like I've got a, uh, I loaded instead of active loaded. I've got here an underground uh, laboratory and off to the side is a complex uh, puzzle that's actually on the table over here that uh, the players can, um, uh, can try to decipher with a notebook here that they hopefully have found earlier that helps um, try to solve this puzzle. So you can see that you can you can use this not only for the locations of where the characters travel, but various puzzles or um, objects can be rendered then in enlarged so that they can um, they can see them, they can see what's what's going on. And again it'll provide a more immersive feel to your game. Okay, and lastly, let's just have a look at what can be done with the uh, animated characters if you're up to the task. So here's our party. First we have Ash, our druid. Yeah, well, the walls aren't hard, so that's uh, she went right through the wall there. There's her walk. Come here. I won't bite. Not too much, anyway. Foolish mortal, you can't outrun me. I'm warning you, you don't want to see me go feral. Make peace with your maker. You'll be seeing her soon. I offer you a sacrifice to nature's elements. Kitty, it's snack time. And once again, these animations are tripped if uh, Ash actually attacks. Kitty, it's snack time. You can see that it automatically tripped the animation. Next, we've got Ariel, our sorceress, and now uh, Sandshaper. There's her ready stance. Die stance. walk stance and again you can see if i lift her she automatically animates the walk and then we've got various attacks farewell give it up already i'll end this in no time i'm ready i've had enough of your petty jokes let's get this over with And uh, next we have uh, Red, who is our fighter. Drop to the stance. Uh, 
Again, going through a little bit through the wall there. Walking. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. Outsider encountered. Neutralizing threat. Want to fight? Sure. Who the hell are you? If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. Want to fight? Sure. We've got rid our cleric. Do not delude yourself, thou wretched fool. I believe in the path I've chosen. I'm done playing nice! I've no time for you. Let's end this quickly. I believe in the path I've chosen. Then we have our uh, warlock. Submission. Know your place. Punishment time. This place shall be your grave. You missed your chance for mercy. Your punishment will be quite severe. And lastly, our newest member. Uh, that's uh, vignette, our fairy. And lastly, we've got uh, Kitty, that's uh, Ash's uh, wolf, but uh, that's just the stock wolf that comes with the uh, uh, tabletop simulator. So yes, here you can see um, the type of things that are possible if uh, you're willing to put a little bit uh, of work into it. The, um, the characters are especially a nice touch because um, you set them up once and they'll be there for the whole adventure. And it really does give a, a nice feel to the game when you've got a little bit of animation, even the, the quotes uh, and things like that just adds, adds another uh, touch of immersion to the game.